Without buying the IKEA wardrobe, how can you make your closet accessible and work for you? And how much does that actually cost? Let's find out. So the goal was to sell old furniture from our bedroom specifically because you know we've been working through our home and the dressers were solid wood. We figured we could make a, a buck or two off of those. And we wanted to take that money and use it to then put into the new closet. So this is what I came up with. Remember, accessibility for me may be different than you. So this is not a Khloe Kardashian closet. It's not. We live in an average home in an average neighborhood and we don't need all of that. We really don't. The first thing I wanted to do was clean out the closet. When cleaning it out, I had to remember that because of the prednisone, I'd gained 100 pounds. So realistically, what was I gonna be wearing for the next eight months? Because I won't start dropping the weight for a while. With that in mind and being married, having someone else that shares of the closet, I needed it to work for both of us. When we painted the closet, first things first, makes it look brand new, right? We use the same paint as the rest of our home. When you walk into any room of my house, including the closet, I wanted it to be calm, relaxing, neutral, not overstimulating, that was the goal. And that's more focused on the accessibility of mental health versus physical, but why not? We're already doing it anyway. So for the structure, the bones of the closet, we use plywood. We live in Florida, we had some extra from last hurricane season that we didn't put up on the windows. And before you go plywood, I know, but, but bear with me, I'll show you. This was a much cheaper option. And realistically, the very top shelf and the shelves that I was putting in weren't gonna hold a lot of weight anyway. On the plywood, we painted it the same color as the walls. I wanted everything to kind of blend. The walls, the shelving, all of that, I didn't want them to stand out. Then I found this trim. It's birch and it's real wood, but it's iron-on. So you literally take a strip of the trim and iron it on the edge to make the piece look solid as one. Another option for this is MDF board. It's fairly cheaper than real wood and Home Depot does free cuts. That's what we ended up doing when we ran out of wood for the very top shelf. For the hardware. So I know that there are accessible things for people that use wheelchairs, but we don't. And that didn't work for me. I wanted the pull out kind. And this is what I found. It was on Amazon. You pull it out like this and all of your clothes fit. A part of my research and looking into people on the spectrum, ADHD, autism, PTSD even, when I started looking up all these things that affect our household, it kind of made sense. The less choices you have to choose from, the less overwhelm. So if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I think we're pretty happy with that choice though. We went back and forth on the dressers and the drawers in here. That was the one thing that I couldn't replicate from Ikea. You know, they have the smooth gliding drawers, but they're so heavy. And I wanted a drawer that I could literally take out of the frame and put up on a stand and do laundry. That was much easier for me than having a big wooden drawer that I had to navigate around, especially with this space being really small. I found these on sale. I was so excited about that. And they were a beige color, so it all matched. As far as lighting, the husband can never see. I mean, I've got dim lights everywhere, lamps everywhere. He wanted to be able to see whenever he was getting ready. So, bright light up top, but I put little lights in for me too, so I don't have to use the big light. When you have a migraine and you're trying to change your clothes, when you're coming in here in the middle of the night and you don't want to fall down, these lights have been great. They charge with a USB and they have sensor. Sensors? Whatever, when you move, they come on. <laughs> That's what they do and they're great. They do run out of battery fairly quickly. I actually have them in the kitchen and I don't like them there because that's a way more usable space where we spend more time in there. So that's something to note. With the shoes, I put them in the shoe rack. It was the cheapest option, under 50 bucks. I think I ended up getting it for 20. So I needed somewhere to store shoes and I didn't want to put them on display. Look, we don't go places. We go to appointments, we go in nature. We need shoes for home because of the fall risk and things like that and back problems. So we don't have Jordans that we're gonna display. Okay, if we did, that'd be a different ball game, but we don't. That's not our lifestyle. And a mirror. Okay, you have to have a mirror. I get it. Full length mirror, great. But the thing is, you really should put it on the entryway wall to make the space look bigger. I get that, 
but with everything that's going on with the steroids and you know I didn't want to see myself I'm barely barely to the point where I'm using a mirror again but you gotta have one so on the other wall it went now we have a lot of medical stuff I mean so much whether we've tried it whether we use it daily every other day so we decided that it was more important to store some of that in here now for the husband he has a lot of things that he wears on the daily like knee braces or carpal tunnel splints um, he's got a sling for his arm that he can't use so those kind of things when he's getting ready they kind of need to be in the same space so those are by the sock drawer makes sense you're putting it on you know you get the you get the medical devices on for the other things like for instance a shoulder surgery pillow he's got another surgery coming up i don't want to get rid of it you know it's great for elevation but i don't want it hanging around my house so we designated a drawer in here for that kind of stuff right beside it we learned every single morning he needs to take a blood pressure that needs to be routine needs to be on the schedule so i got this little stool so you can accurately take it feet flat on the ground you know you gotta follow the rules and i put it in this little basket i feel like it doesn't look medically you know hanging around but it's still accessible you can still grab it reach it and it does record to his phone or you know on the device itself so there's no paper or pen needed for that and yes a lot of you guessed this but the top shelf those are hospital bags because you never know when it's going to happen i wanted a bag for myself that i could wipe down that was the biggest deal to me because whenever you go to the hospital it's nasty there are germs i mean you don't you don't know what's been up in there so yes i've had a beautiful fancy bag in the past but that's not what works best for me and the hospital bags are perfect on the top shelf we're not going to the hospital every day i mean we put that off as long as we freaking can but they're still there and they're still ready so i have one for me and one for him and that big bag is actually a down comforter it is so hard to put on a duvet and when the seasons change like they do in florida i know it's not freezing cold here to a lot of you but it is to me and i sweat at night so i want that thing ready to go and it's only in a bag so we can travel with it or so the dust doesn't freaking collect on it and the dog hair that's why it's in a bag i had to have something personal in here i know my colors and my style it's really boring a lot of times but i do like sentimental things i just don't like clutter so i made a little shelf on top with some extra wood painted it black which is an accent throughout our whole home and then threw some things that mean something to me that really mattered to me and that kind of brings it around to make it feel like it's my closet or our closet these i think the term is an extend a hook i might be wrong but a lot of people ask me about this basically the hook comes down stretches out comes down if you can see you can hang on and when you're done bulge right back up I really think that this was one of the hardest spaces that I had to come in and say, how am I going to make it work for me? The reason is I had a life. You know, I used to have scrubs hanging in here. He had military uniforms hanging in here. We don't wear that anymore. So what we wore became priority. That's what needs to be hung up. Even if it's a t-shirt or pajamas. I'm not saying to get rid of all your nice things, but if you're not wearing nice clothes or, you know, what do we call them? Church outfits or work clothes because you're not working anymore what sense does it make to walk in your closet and that be what you need to grab the first thing there it doesn't overall with the cost and the effort i am extremely happy with these results i really like how it looks like the rest of my home and i just like that it's not overwhelming to come in and get ready you know i have specific drawers for specific things and everything has a home sure but cleaning this thing out and putting a fresh coat of paint and figuring out what I actually wear and making mental note that that's the type of outfit I should be buying, biggest life changer. I haven't figured out the closet door yet because I just don't know. This room and the flare room, haven't figured it out. So it's doorless right now. So that's the last thing that I need to figure out. But overall, the final cost was... Yeah, I was really happy with that. So that's the closet. Next up, the kitchen. I think we'll do the kitchen next.